Guys, hey, it's Ted Bogert. We're back with the Ted Show. Excited to have this young man, this very professional looking young man. Steve Rosenberg is on the show with us today. We're going to talk about running your business on autopilot. How many of us would love to learn some tips on how to do that? Um, he's got a great background, a speaker. He's on podcasts. Former former recovering real estate investor, probably still doing that. Uh, but he's got a great story and he's going to share his wisdom with us today. Welcome, Steve. How you doing? Thanks, Ted. Appreciate you having me on, buddy. I'm excited <laughs> to have you on. Great energy. We need that energy, especially uh, lots of people are trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives, trying to figure out how to run their businesses. Uh, and we're going to, I promise you all, we're going to take a deeper dive into that. But before we do, tell us a little bit about you. Give us your journey. Uh, maybe from point A to point B, how you kind of got to where you're at. You've got the professional mic, the professional background. You're on podcast. You're imparting your wisdom. Uh, but tell us what 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 that was like before and leading up to that. Yeah, sure. So my background, uh, you know, I, I started off not being in real estate, not knowing anything about real estate or wanting to be in real estate or even be one of these guys that, you know, has these all this stuff around me. Uh, my background is being a commercial airline pilot. Um, I was hired with a commercial airline at 25 years old, wow. had the best, safest, most secure job you could ever imagine being a airline pilot for a major airline. Um, and then 9-11 hit hmm. and 9-11 changed many lives, mine included, because two days after 9-11, I got delivered a furlough notice and that wow. safe and that secure job wasn't safe and it was never secure. And I had to realize that I did not have the skill set to do anything except fly a metal tube around in the sky as a commercial airline pilot. But because I was not having a job anymore, I had to figure out what else I would do. So I just started learning what do what do people do that, that are wealthy? Like, what, what what is that? And all ties just kept heading back to real estate. And I knew nothing about it. So I had to go to that building with books called the library. Uh, I had to start renting books. Every, you know, I read a book a week for about a year, all about wealth, real estate, trying to understand. Uh, and then I dove into real estate, uh, not knowing what I was doing. And of course, I got ripped off. I got lied to. I got my money stolen from me. I mean, you name it. Uh, but I kept getting back up and I kept learning lessons and I kept trying to figure out this puzzle called real estate. Um, I eventually got my job back as an airline pilot, which I still am to this day. Um, I fly a Boeing 777 aircraft for a major airline all over the world. Wow. Um, and I just started learning how to get better at real estate. And as time went on, I started being successful, mildly, had a little more success. I own apartment complexes, houses, all that. Um, and real estate has an interesting way that as soon as you think you know everything, and you're the smartest person, it comes like a wrecking ball and it just cleans your <laughs> clock. It and <clears throat> I had that wrecking ball come through my living room many times. And <clears throat> I ended up starting a property management company to manage my wreck of properties, we'll say. Uh, I started that management company in 2012. In 2019, I had over a thousand properties um, had 60% of my company scaled in Mexico with virtual assistance. And then I sold that company for millions of dollars to a venture capital firm and became a vice president for them with over 10,000 properties. Wow. The whole time I was an airline pilot. So what I do now going kind of full, bringing this full circle is I show people how to run their business the way we did to scale to a thousand properties by having it run the way the airlines run systems, structure, procedures, emergencies, checklists, all the things that we deal with in the airlines are what people deal with on a daily basis, whether it's real estate, roofing, CPA, mortgage, it doesn't matter. A business is all the same. And so I work with businesses and showing them my expertise as an airline pilot and a business owner and a real estate investor. I kind of bring it all into one big basketball and kind of slam it in. <laughs> what I love about that story, so many things, but the fact that you figured out how to scale it, because I think that's where I think that's yes. where most people, they in, me included, I'm guilty of this. I don't utilize my time in the most productive way. Um, I'm out doing a lot of things that are not, I call them IPAs, income producing activities. 
Um, I spend a lot of time not doing those and not scaling and not uh, utilizing other resources to, to allow me to be bigger and run my business on autopilot. I think a lot of us suffer with that. Yeah. And you know, there, there's three things that you have to do to, to be able to have a business that runs on its own that is growing because if your business is not growing, it is dying. Yes. Um, and so it's, it's monetization. You've got to figure out how to monetize your business. You've got to figure out how to have a continuous inbound flow of leads, the right leads, right? Um, and being able to convert those leads. So that's marketing makes the phone ring. Sales converts that client to become a customer. So that's, that's monetization. The next piece of that puzzle is systemization. Once they're clients, how can they run and systematize so that the business is running without you the same way airlines run, right? When you look at an airline, you know, if you're at the, at an airplane gate, you're looking at fuelers, rampers, catering, cleaning, all of these are systems that run 24 seven, seven days a week, every second of the day, somewhere in the world, this system is working. People are the integral part, but it's 80% systemized, 20% humanized. So monetization is the first systemization is the second and the next is the scalability of your business. How do you duplicate yourself, which comes down to leadership, which comes down to you being the leader and understanding that your job is not to be the hardest worker. Your job is to be the smartest thinker and you've got to have that vision and inspiration. And so that's what I coach people on are those three things because it's like a three legged stool. If one is missing, the business will implode at some point. It's just, Basically, until you hang up the towel or run out of money is what happens. And people that don't do these three things, um, they have two options. One is like a plane running out of fuel. They will just run it into the ground. And number two, they will die with the business. And that's unfortunately as in the world of entrepreneurship, whether it's real estate or anything, it's littered with the souls of entrepreneurs that had great ideas but they didn't take time to work on the business instead of working in the business. And that's what I help people with. I, I, I would imagine that step one, uh, the first leg of the stool is ease is easier. At least that's, that's the step people can mostly get to when you get to step two, people fight systems or they don't know how to create productive systems. Correct. They don't know how to create systems that actually work um, or they get stuck, they inherited a system and they're still trying to make it work. And it just, every time it proves it doesn't work, they don't know how to get out of that. So how can somebody start on creating a system within their sphere? Yeah. So that, that's a great question. And, and I will start by saying the biggest mistake and you're correct. Monetization is easy. Monetization will fix problems immediately, but not long-term. <clears throat> The biggest mistake that all entrepreneurs make, all, not all, the majority, whether they're doing real estate or business, is they don't come up with their final destination. <clears throat> You've got to build a business with a sale date. And so the reason, and, and I'm going to answer your question, kind of bring it full circle. Your business has to have a sale date, not because you want to sell it, but because in order for it to be a saleable asset, it has to run without you which is systemization of your business. And if you don't have a date, I'm talking a day, a month, a year of revenue, profit margin. And if you're not saying, okay, in, if I said, Ted, I need a date for your business, you have to tell me, okay, Steve, June 1st, 2027, I'm doing $10 million a year with 35% profit margin working three hours a week. Now we know our destination, like flying a plane. We don't get in the plane and go, where should we fly to today? How much fuel do we have? What do you think? We know the destination before we ever get in the cockpit. Same thing in your business. If you don't know where you're going, you can't build the systems to get you to the destination. So that's why so many people are busy being busy because they don't actually know where they're going. If you were to stop on the highway because you were lost and you said, Steve, I need directions. What's the first thing I'm going to ask you? Where are you Wait. going, Ted? Yeah. And if you go, I don't know, then I'm going to say, well, then Ted, I can't really help you. <laughs> and so how many, you know how many people say, I don't know. I mean, I'd be one of those sometimes. I, I'm guilty of it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know because we're so, like you said, we're so in the moment of what's going on and the chaos that we have created because we don't have the systems uh, that we'd have no idea. We, we don't plan that out. I couldn't tell you that a few years ago where I'm headed. I, I couldn't. Yeah. And, and, and that's, and so sometimes we have to slow down to speed up. 
So what I mean by that is sometimes as entrepreneurs, we're ready, shoot, aim people. I'll figure it out as I go. Well, that works until it doesn't work. And in the entrepreneurial world, we're alone. We're on an island. And, and I've realized that there's not much help. There's people to show you tactically how to do what you do better. But there's not many people out there that ask those bigger questions like, where's this plane going? What is your business plan? What is the destination of your business? Because if you can't clearly enunciate it and you don't know what that is, how are you going to hire someone that wants to come work for you that sees your vision? Because if you don't have the vision, I guarantee you they're going to go, I don't know where this freaking guy Ted is going, man. He's just, he is busy all day putting out fires. You're not inspiring people. So what happens? Employees leave. And so everything goes down to leadership and that leadership, I tell people, that's when you've got to start understanding that you, as you grow now at first, look, I know how it is. We all start off doing everything in the business, but it's the being successful as a business owner is systematically deselecting things that you should not be doing and you should be leveraging and delegating based on the final goal. Going back to your original question, every business has between eight to 11 systems in their business, whether it's getting a new client, converting that client, handing them over to operations, processing, paying them, whatever it is, everybody thinks they're special. Business is business. I don't care if you're Chevrolet, Frito-Lay, Delta Airlines, United Airlines, Ted Bogart, we're all the same. We all have the same chassis. It's it, the One of the biggest challenges we have is us. It's in our head. We think we're so important. There's no business that needs, like if, if I don't show up, if I'm in Tokyo and I have a flight and I don't show up, my airline doesn't say, well, Steve's not here today. I guess, I guess we're just going to shut down and just call it a day. I guess everybody go home. No, the system works because it's not people dependent. It's systems dependent. So and if, if people could do that, it, it would be so much better to build a business and easier. Building a successful business is not hard. Getting out of our own way, that's the hard part. Agreed. Ego, so much. There's ego, ego in there. and pride. Ego and pride. It is. And all, again, I'm speaking like I've been there. I think I'm the one who has to make everything work, everything shine. I, I didn't, but I couldn't, I didn't replicate. I didn't, it wasn't replicatable what I was doing. So I was going to just burn myself out, which I did and have in the past numerous times as a serial entrepreneur. Uh, because I didn't have that goal in mind, the end place, where am I going? Uh, and I didn't have systems or the systems I had were actually creating more work for me instead of working for me. Yeah. So I, I, I love that systems is the second leg. Let's talk about the third leg. So let's say we get to a point where we're, we're good. We've, we've got our systems, we're working it. So there's a third leg too. talk about. That. Yeah. The third leg is one that most people never think about is the duplication. How do you duplicate yourself? How do I get two Ted's or Ted's 20 Ted's? If Mark, if, if, if monetization does their job and they're bringing in all this business and operations is able to handle it and, and systematize it at some point, you've got to figure out how to grow and duplicate yourself and triplicate yourself. That's the scalability of your business. In order to scale your business, you've got to create the leverage of your company, which means you got to create an organization chart. You've got to figure out roles, duties, responsibilities to put the right people in the right seat, doing the right job. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you've got to learn how to be that leader. See, one of the biggest challenges is people always tell me how hard it is to get good employees. Good employees are not bought. Good employees are taught. Yeah. You have to create them. You can take any employee if they believe in the vision and they believe where you're taking them, they should be able to, they should want to walk through walls for you because they see your passion. When I work with people, when I coach people or I do things, they know I am so passionate about making their business successful. They believe me and they don't even have to trust themselves. They just have to trust me that I believe it more than them. And so when, when you want to grow and scale your business, you've got to learn how to scale it. And that goes back to your ability to lead people and be a leader and understand leverage is the key to growth. I, I, I just experienced, again, I'm always evolving on this. I'm a work in progress. I had a, a VA, an assistant, 
And I realized early on that because I didn't have the systems in place, I was just, he was becoming a me, but not in a good way. Yeah. Uh, he was putting out nothing, chaos and fires and all sorts of crazy stuff because I didn't have the, the I, I wanted to duplicate, I wanted to scale, but I did not have the systems in place in order for him to do it in the beginning. And it took a lot of effort for me to really sit down and write those out and, and, and really think through how that was going to allow him to do the things that I needed to not be doing, like you talked about earlier. But that takes time. You have to, you have to, what did you say? You have to slow down to speed up. You yeah. have to slow down. And I love that. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, because it's all about the side hustle and your 75 hustles you have, and uh, all of them are crazy and you're not really making any money or any progress, but you know, you've got 45 jobs and 45 things that you're doing. Uh, and I think people don't know how to slow down. And, and I, one of the challenges is, and I've, I've been coached and mentored my, my whole, you know, entrepreneurial life, we'll say, um, and, and what I've learned is, number one, you're never going to figure it out on your own. That That is key. Anyone who's successful, I, I'm talking I'm talking like private jet successful. Every single one that I, I, I am friends with or I've been coached by, they said, Steve, you will never figure this out on your own. You have to get somebody that knows how to do it, number one, because you've never even been down this road before. You don't know how to, how to ask for $20 million to build a business because you've never done it. So that's why you got to have it, you know, being a business owner, an entrepreneur, it's a team sport, but yet we're taught our ego and pride. I've got to figure it out. That's why so many entrepreneurs fail. They don't ask for help. Asking for help is coaching guidance, whatever it is, but you've got to figure out that you've got to set that ego and pride aside and say, you know what, Steve, I just don't know, but I want to learn. That's a different way of saying, how can we do this as opposed to, I can't do this. Right. And so it's just changing your verbiage, changing your vernacular, Changing, you know, I, I tell people all the time, if you want to build a $20 million business, you have to become a $20 million CEO first mentally. You don't build a $20 million business and then say, now I'll be a $20 million CEO. It doesn't work that way. You've okay. got to act like it, talk like it, be around other $20 million CEOs. It, it's like, and so some people say like, well, I'll start, I'll start getting coached when I get there. I'll start reading books about it when I get there. Dude, you don't understand. You are never leaving. You're never even leaving base zero because you're at an equal point. You're at a buoyancy level that you're happy with. Otherwise, wouldn't you already be there? That's correct. And so I, that, I that's just my perspective. No, I, I think people struggle with all of the things that we're talking about. I believe people know they need to have the three legs. I think that a lot of times they don't even know the first step in the three legs. Yes, maybe they, they can they can figure out maybe how to monetize things. But honestly, some people even struggle with that. I've struggled with that in businesses before and the asking and, and setting up systems. So if, if somebody came to you, if you can leave us with um, one or two points, uh, maybe just a teaser on because I really want people to engage you. And uh, Steve's website is scrolling across the bottom there, steverosenberg.com. Uh, but I want people to maybe leave with something to think about. So when they reach out to you and they think about their business after they've watched this show, uh, they go, wow, he's 100% right. I could do that. What's something that they, what's a first step or a second step mindset? It doesn't matter. It could be a physical step. Yeah, uh, so that, that's a great question. I think they need to sit down in a quiet room and look at their life from three things, health, wealth, and relationship. And they really have to think, what do I want my life to look like? I can't tell them what their life should look like. You can't, nobody can. You've got to sit down and ask yourself, who do I want to become? Because making money and having a bunch of zeros in your bank account, I can tell you, it means nothing. It really, like if that's what you're banking everything on for your happiness, you will be sadly mistaken when you reach that number. Because Great. a miserable rich person is much different than a happy broke person. And so you've got to figure out who do you want to become? So I just go back to, I wish somebody would have taught this to me of starting with the end and working it backwards. If someone can say, Steve, this is how I want my life to look. This is how much revenue I want to make. This is what I want to do on vacation. See, one of the things really quick, and, and I don't want to take too much of your time, but a lot of people have the misconception that they want more time or more freedom. Well, 
if you think about it, we only get 24 hours in a day. So we're never getting more time. So that's, that's dumb to begin with. We don't get more time. <laughs> freedom is nothing that we can quantify. We can't quantify freedom. I haven't said someone tell me, he's like, Steve, I've had as much freedom as I've ever wanted. Well, you could sell all your shit tomorrow and go live on the beach and have all the freedom that you want. But you know what you won't get is you won't like the memories that you're creating. Folks, we're not buying time and we're not buying freedom. You're using the ability of the business revenue that you're creating to give you back some time to have the freedom to go buy memories. You should think to yourself, what memories do you want to buy this year? Buy memories. Don't buy time. Don't buy freedom. That is my advice. And I, and I just, I am a big, big believer in that. Beautiful. All right. So Steve Rosenberg, what's the best way they can find you? Obviously your website, are you on social media platforms? Yep. I am on all the platforms. You can reach out to me. I will answer back. It is me. Um, Rosenberg, Steve on, uh, Instagram, Steve Rosenberg on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, you can go to my website. I'm, if you Google me, you will find me. How's that? Pretty simple. <laughs> you what a joy to have you on, man. I'm inspired. I love it. I love it, it man. You Thank you. Energy. Um, but I, I really do believe that there are so many people struggling with this and don't understand why what they're doing isn't working. Uh, and instead of making that leap, taking that time, slowing down to speed up, um, they just continue to just throw shit against the wall and hope something sticks. And then they're still in the same boat the next week and they dread Mondays and they there's all of that whole crazy mindset that goes on. I want you guys to reach out to Steve, go to his website. Find him at Rosenberg Steve on all social media. Thank you for being a guest, my friend. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, Ted. Appreciate you having me, buddy. All right, you guys. Come on. Look at those three, three legs on that stool. Let's take a look at it. Reach out to Steve. We'll see you.